Hello, good afternoon. Um, thank you for uh, joining me today. Um, it's Monday the 18th of April um, and I am in my office today because it's the open to the suppliers, which is great news. Um, and so I, I'm not sure what you would like um, us to talk and focus on today. Um, so if you have any particular ideas, please feel free to post them. Um, there's a few things I wanted to remind people about um, is that there is a mother and baby app um, that we are advocating that people download onto smartphones um, so that uh, it's great. It's a great source of information. Um, it also has um, a personalised care plan within it that will help uh, in terms of planning for the birth of your baby um, and some other aspects uh, that you might find useful. So that's just called the Mother and Baby app um, and you can download it um, from the App Store. Um, the other thing I just wanted to, to remind people about is the um, Ask the Midwife telephone line. So we're really lucky that we've got some community midwives who are um, able to help us um, during this time and they've set side, time aside um, to answer your questions. That line um, is from 11 a.m. in the morning until 7 p.m. in the evening. And just uh, a reminder of the number, it's 07919 That's 07919 And like I said, that's available from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. Um, seven days a week. Um, so that we can make sure that we can answer any questions you may have. Um, or signpost you to where you can get some more information. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you about is um, we're looking at um, everything that we uh, wanted to do um, before COVID started and how we can make sure that we're still achieving those things. Um, it has been um, difficult um, to provide as much continuity of care um, due to the restrictions as we would perhaps have liked to do, but um, we want to try and measure just how we're getting on with continuity of care. So Heidi, our Better Birth Midwife, has launched a questionnaire. It's just a very brief survey monkey um, uh, that women will be asked to complete um, once you've had your baby. Um, and you can give us an idea of how continuity of care has worked for you. There's also some questions on them about um, your experience of our COVID restrictions as well. So even if you have your baby at home or in one of our freestanding midwifery led units in the spires on delivery suite, we'd really like you to complete this questionnaire. So we've sent it out to midwives to remind them, but also, you know, once you've had your baby, I'm sure you'll be thinking of many other things, but if you could um, remind them um, about the questionnaire, we want to hear um, what this has been like for you and how we're doing in terms of continuity. So I've got a few questions. Sarah Jane says, um, once you've had your baby, are you still recommending to stay in hospital until the newborn baby check is complete six hours after the birth? So Sarah Jane, we have got the opportunity to do some newborn um, checks in the community as well. Um, so we're not keeping you in just for those newborn checks. Unless you live out of, outside our area, if you live in Buckinghamshire or, or nearer to Reading, then um, we tend to ask you to wait for the baby checks before you go home because it, it's a bit more difficult for us to arrange those. So Shannon, um, you're 29 weeks pregnant today and so excited. That's fantastic news. It's brilliant you're having babies. Um, but you've been experiencing some dizzy and sick spells. Not often, but lasts for about 20 minutes. Is this normal? Um, Shannon, it can be. It can be due to many things. It can be due to hormones. It can be due to the weather. Uh, it can be due to your blood pressure. Um, what we'd say is just make sure that you keep yourself hydrated. It's very important to have a bottle of water um, available and make sure that you drink um, you know, regularly throughout the day. But if you're not sure at all, then please contact your GP or your community midwife. Um, and we can check you over. Um, but generally, uh, women experience all sorts of things um, when they're pregnant that can be completely normal. Um, so that's a couple of your questions um, answered there. Um, 
what other things can we tell you about? So I think we've got a session happening tomorrow um, with uh, Trish Nisham, one of our midwives, who's going to be doing baby care. Um, and I think we've got a session this uh, Friday as well, looking at the early pregnancy assessment unit. We're also keen to know if there's any topics you want us to cover that we haven't covered, um, and we will try to address those um, as we go along. Uh, so Jess, you've told me you're 38 weeks pregnant and you've developed a cold sore. Will this affect your option to use gas and air if it's not cleared up in time? No, Jess, you can still use gas and air. Gas and air, um, we give you a mouthpiece to use. It's a single use mouthpiece. It's used just for you. So it doesn't have an impact at all um, on whether you have a cold sore or not. And hopefully that'll get better quickly because I appreciate it's probably quite annoying for you. Uh, Sophie, is there any current advice re having friends and family visit newborns once they're home because you're due in two weeks? So Sophie, we just advise you to continue um, the government advice. So at present, you know, people outside your household should not be visiting you um, at home. Um, you know, we've said that, uh, I think uh, Boris Johnson said, one person from outside your household meeting you outside um, in the fresh air. So that wouldn't meet with friends and family coming to your house. Um, I know some people have got round it. Excuse me a second. Um, some people have got round that by having, um, you know, having relatives come and look at the baby through the window, which of course would be fine. Um, although, you know, again, it's about the travelling restrictions. You're meant to travel for exercise, not necessarily for things like that. So I think, you know, that's the government's way of keeping you safe. So um, please don't have friends and family that are outside your house coming to your house. Frida, you've got a couple of questions. Um, you can't find the frequently asked questions. So I apologise for that. Um, perspective, we're happy for them to attend. With anything, we say it's a balance of risk. There are people that are in the more at-risk groups um, who are more susceptible um, uh, you know, to having problems with COVID and those have been identified um, and if you feel, you know, it, it is that balance of risk you Oh, you're back um, Sorry about that um, Trying to find the best way to, to see you um, Um, I'm very sorry. Um, I seem to have lost the signal, but I think you're back now. So, um, Frida, I was just giving you advice in terms of your partner, um, and um, it really is just about making sure that uh, you feel comfortable with him coming in um, to be with you. Um, and you're asking, does the Spires have any labour delivery recovery postnatal rooms? And if so, are you lucky enough to use one? and with your partner to be able to stay overnight with you. So um, we do have um, postnatal rooms um, on the spires. They are single rooms and they're en suite. Um, they have double beds in them. And in non-COVID times, we absolutely would encourage your birth partner to stay overnight with you. However, unfortunately, due to the COVID restrictions, when you go to into the room, which is just next to the birthing room, um, to rest after you've had the baby that's at the point that your birth partner would go home um, until you're ready to be discharged from hospital um sean you're asking do you have any midwives who will see mothers with mental health issues um the perinatal team will not see me and it'd be nice to have support from a midwife so sean you should have um your community midwife who should be with you for support um, and we do have midwives who have more experience in terms of mental health um, and there are different avenues um, that uh, we can help support you. So please do talk to your community midwife about it. Um, Antonetta, you're 36 weeks and on the last scan they said the baby's in a breech position. What is your advice? So Antonetta, they will have made you an appointment to come to our breach clinic, um, which is on a Monday, and you'll meet our fabulous um, breach midwives who will talk to you um, about your options. 
they scan your baby to see what position baby is in and how best um, they can support you. Um, and uh, they would encourage you to try, if your baby is still breech when they see you, to try and turn baby unless baby is not in an optimal position for that. But um, they, will, they will give you advice on how to manage that. Um, there are some other remedies that you can try if you search on the internet. There will be various things, including moxibustion, which you could try. I'm not sure how easy things like that are to get hold of um, during COVID times. So Rebecca, you've got a Veruca. Should you wait until after pregnancy to put anything on it? Uh, no, um, Rebecca, pregnancy would not be a reason not to treat it. Um, so again, you can phone... You can go to the pharmacist and ask for advice, um, but uh, you know you can have treatment for it. Uh, so Carla, your baby's six days old today and there's a lot of sleepy dust making you struggle, making her struggle to open her eyes. You clean them uh, regularly. Is there anything else that you can do? Um, so again, just uh, you can clean a baby's eyes with cold boiled water. Um, some people use um, their breast milk, if you have breast milk, um, to cleanse their eyes. But um, really, it's, it will just take time um, for it all to work its way out. You can do some gentle massage in the corner with your um, pinky and do circular massage round about baby's eye um, and pull over under the eye and this helps to, to, um, to clear the tear duct. So you could try that. Uh, so Amy, uh, you have five and seven year old daughters and you're 20 weeks ex pregnant expecting a boy, which you're excited about. That's very excited. I hope your daughters are excited about having a brother as well. Thank you for sharing, Amy. Um, so uh, I've had another um, question from Maternity Voices Partnership saying, can you ask how normal breathlessness and tiredness is in the third trimester. When should you be concerned about either of these things? So generally, it's quite common to get um, uh, breathless and tired. If you think about it, if you um, if you have a um, uh, you think about the additional weight that you put on when you have a baby, um, and you are carrying that around with you all the time. So as that baby's getting bigger and bigger it gets more and more difficult um, to carry about. So, you know, it's, it's trying to do stairs, all of those things, general walking about is quite normal um, and is quite normal to feel tired. Sometimes just as you're about to go into labour and have the baby a week or so before you start to be feeling a bit perkier again, it's your body getting ready for it. But generally you've got this big lump, it's, it affects your lungs capacity to be able to you know, breathe as freely, so all of that is completely normal. If you have any pain or sharpness in your chest with breathing, then obviously we would recommend that you contact um, your GP or your community midwife for advice, and they may refer you into our maternity assessment unit. But it is quite normal to get breathless and tired. Um, Rebecca, you're 18 weeks pregnant and your glands in your neck have swollen. You feel fine, but just wondered if you should be worried in um, regards to the baby. So, Rebecca, if you have um, the glands in your neck can come up if you if you're going to have an infection um, or something, um, you said that you're feeling fine. So if you feel fine, then then clearly it's nothing to be concerned about. But obviously, if you do feel unwell, then then ask, um, you know, uh, get in touch with your GP if you have any concerns. Um, but it doesn't sound like anything in particular to worry about at this time. Um, and um, you know, it, it, it wouldn't have any effect on the baby, your glands being up. So Hannah, you've asked, is it possible to have a group B strep test before labour? You weren't sure when, when we should have this and what makes you eligible. So Hannah, we don't recommend in the UK having a group B strep test because um, if you look at places like America, they test absolutely everybody. Um, and all of those women have antibiotics and yet their outcomes are exactly the same to us um, and we don't, um, we don't test. Um, if we pick it up in pregnancy, and generally that's um, in your urinalysis at the beginning of pregnancy, or if we happen to do a swab of some sort and we pick it up, 
then we would recommend antibiotics. But otherwise, uh, we don't we don't do it. Um, uh, we don't see in the value of offering it to everyone. So if it's something that you really want to have, then we recommend that you get it done privately. Um, but it's not something that we do on the NHS because we, we haven't seen the value in testing for it. Um, so Raluca, you are trying to be seven weeks pregnant um, and uh, planning to birth in the spars. If you want to use the pool, do you just ring when you go into labour and ask if there's a chance? So, no, Raluca, generally we use our pool rooms for all women when they go into labour and we tend to fill the pool. And then if you decide you don't want to use it, then we can run it away, which might seem wasteful. But um, if we feel that you're in labour and need the pool, we will fill it for you. Because um, the majority of people that come through the spires um, want to use the pool. So Sarah, you're 39 weeks and in the last three to four weeks your resting heart rate has dropped a lot from 90 to around 76. Should you be worried about this or are you just more relaxed now you're on maternity leave? Um, Sarah, I'd say it's you're more relaxed now you're on maternity leave. Um, your body's clearly coping and resting well, um, but it's nothing that is significant or that we would worry about. Um, so Charlotte, um, you were 35 weeks and 3 days today and had quite a large colostrum leak. You managed a whole syringe in about 20 minutes. How much do you recommend that you burn into ho bring into hospital with you? Um, and should you just get as much as you can over the next few weeks? Charlotte, yes, it sounds like you've got um, a great supply going there. Um, and if you're going to leak it, then it's great that you can capture it um, and freeze it. Um, in terms of what you bring into hospital, we just re uh, advise you to bring in, you know, a couple of syringes with you. Um, when you come in, um, there is uh, there is a freezer available. I gather on level five, but there isn't a freezer on delivery suite or the spires. So again, it's about storage. Um, so if you can just bring in a few, and if you actually needed more, then perhaps somebody could drop more off in the hospital for you, um, if you needed it. But a, f a few would be plenty. So Kelly, you're 21 weeks and four days and you haven't seen your midwife since eight weeks and had your scan a couple of weeks ago. When will I hear from and see my midwife next? So Kelly, on the um, Maternity Voices Partnership, they've got the updated schedule of care that we have now since we've been in COVID. So it's much clearer when you should see people um, and, and midwife. If this is your second baby you or subsequent baby, um, then you see the midwife much less initially and we start to see you more from 28 weeks of pregnancy. Um, but um, you should have a contact for your midwife and you can always phone them um, so that they can talk you through when you would next um, be seen. Um, and then I think the final question that I have is from Chloe. Um, what is your what is the opinion on castor oil to induce labour? Um, Chloe, it tastes absolutely repulsive. Um, it will give you an upset t stomach um, and there is no evidence that it will put you into labour. So um, it wouldn't be uh, my go-to advice for somebody to induce labour. Um, I think it's much better to benefit, uh, to balance um, exercise and rest, um, you know, have some, uh, you know, reflexology. You can't go out to have that, but... Um, you know, um, some general massage, I suppose, due to COVID, we can't, uh, unless your partner is a reflexologist, that wouldn't hurt, it wouldn't work. Um, but um, it's just about trying to relax, enjoy your baby, thinking about your baby, do some hand expressing. Um, obviously, intercourse is a little bit easier now that you're in lockdown, um, which can help because semen can produce um, natural prostaglandins too. Um, but generally castor oil is just going to make you have a sore tummy and go to the toilet a lot um, and won't necessarily get you into labour. So um, I'm just trying to think. Um, I have a community midwife with me, but she may not be wanting to necessarily be on Facebook. Um, so I shall wander out of here and we'll see if we can see um, one of the birthing rooms in the spires. Um, while we're here. Uh, so I will come this way. 
Um, I'm never quite sure how the signal's going to work um, in here um, and how busy indeed we are. Um, in fact, all the doors are closed, which is great. Um, we're all nice and busy today. Um, and then I have, look, this is one of our midwives. Let's turn you around so that you can see them if they don't run away. Here we go. She says, there we go. This is, this is Pat and this is Steph. So they are both midwives up here and they're keeping us very busy today. <laughs> so we love busy. So masks on, masks off, we're all there. And then this is one of the postnatal rooms that we were talking about that is just being cleaned and prepared um, from before. Um, so these are rooms that people can stay um, afterwards, but um, obviously not with your... I'm not sure. Do you want to be on Facebook Live? Me. Do you want to share your baby? Your oh, there you go. So here we go. Look, somebody who's had a baby. We, can we show your back. baby? And they've been amazing up here. Yeah. Oh, that's great news. Can you introduce us to your baby? This is baby Grace. Baby Grace. I've got to try not to get my hands in the way. Oh, she's lovely. Aww. There we go. Look, baby Grace was born in the spires. When was she born? 2.28 this morning. There we go. And look how amazing she you looks. She does look amazing. She does yeah, look yeah, amazing. Yeah. Up and going with her baby. How right, fantastic. And there's Katrina. Yes, Bye. I will leave you all to it. Bye. Bye. Oh. So I think it doesn't seem... Oh, I was going to say it doesn't seem that we have more questions than we have. Um. So you've asked, should we keep colostrum frozen when we bring it in in the cool bag? Yes, if you take it out of your freezer and put it in your cool bag, um, that's great, um, and bring it in with you. Uh, Charlotte, you're 31 weeks and four days, and you can't remember deciding where you'll give birth. It's the only thing you decide on the day. Um, so Charlotte, if um, it's uh, choosing where you birth your baby is a conversation that we'd recommend that you had with your midwife. Oh, and you're back. Um, if this is your second baby, if your body mass index at booking was under 40, then you can birth at home in midwifery led units um, or on the delivery suite. Um, but if your body mass index is more than 40, then please talk to your community midwife and see um, if we can explore options with you. But, um, you know, there's lots of information on our website about places to give birth, um, and it's good to have a think of them through. So generally, by the time you're about 36 weeks pregnant, most people have an idea of where they'd like to go to birth their baby. Um, Victoria, you're 37 weeks pregnant, and last week started to get swelling in your feet. Is it normal? Victoria, it can be completely normal. Again, this comes back to the size of your bump, the position that baby's lying in, um, and your circulation can, can get a little bit more sluggish. Um, so, you know, if you have any concerns, ask your midwife, but generally um, it, it can be quite normal. Um, so, Kelly, you're saying you think your work may be opening soon. Are you still part of the vulnerable list? So, Kelly, anybody who's... Um, more than 28 weeks pregnant, I gather, is part of the vulnerable list. Um, so you'd need to talk to your employer about that. Yvonne, you're asking if you have to stay in, which you found out you need to do now for 24 hours, how many to ward on level five or are they single rooms? So Yvonne, even people that have to stay in for 24 hours may still be sent up to level seven to our single rooms up there. It depends on how you gave birth to your baby um, and whether you went to theatre or not. Anybody who has to go to theatre for part of, of, of giving birth to their baby will go to level five um, and other women will go up to level seven. Um, and on level five, um, the bays are four beds in a bay, but um, we make sure that we have social distancing applied so you're not um, so we have taken precautions when you're down there. Beth, and you've asked what happens when the spires is full and another labouring woman comes in. So 
uh, Beth and um, if this all the spires rooms are full, um, we would. Uh, what we tend to find is that women are in different stages of labour, and a woman may just have given birth when the next lady comes in. If that's the case, we move her to another room, um, and then um, we we change and clean the room to the right standard before you then transfer in there. Um, if you're going to birth too quickly for that to happen, we do have other rooms, they just don't have pools in it. Um, if the pool is the thing that absolutely you 100% want um, and we can't provide it immediately when you come into the spires, there is always the opportunity to go to delivery suite and use their pool if their pool is available. Um, but generally we can juggle things around to make sure that um, that we have um, facilities available for you. Uh, so Hannah, um, you're on the border of Buckinghamshire and Oxfordshire and you're currently registered in Bugs. However, due to being giving birth at Wickham Birth Centre, which is now closed for births, you've been told Aylesbury is the next option, but it's further away for me than Oxford. How easy is it for me to move to a birth centre in Oxford? That would be your preference. Um, so Hannah, what we have to uh, understand is which birth centre is closest for you and how many weeks pregnant you are. Um, the um, I suspect on the on the balance of Buckinghamshire and Oxfordshire, it might be Wallingford. Um, but if you can speak to your community midwife, your community midwife, whether she's a Bucks community midwife or Oxford, will be able to provide you with the details. Um, and certainly some midwives on the border um, have contacted me in the past about that. Um, so, you know, again, it's just trying to get more information and work out how we can best help you. Uh, Yvonne, uh, yep, yeah, you're uh, saying that level seven wouldn't be for you. Of course, Yvonne, um, then it would be on level five, um, the postnatal rooms there. Um, and like I said, there's generally um, four women in a bay. Uh, Kelly, you've opted for a cesarean section. You did this around 18 weeks. When would I hear about this? So Kelly, um, you would be referred to um, either the antenatal clinic, um, to the consultants there um, to talk about it further, um, or you'd be referred to our birth after cesarean clinic again when we talk about this further with you. Um, and, and what we want to do is just um, explore the reasons for it, the pros and cons of both, um, and help you plan the right birth for you, um, wherever that may be. So um, that seems to be a lot of questions for today, and technology seems to be failing me. Um, you've now gone very dark. Um, so I think um, I will, I will um, cut today short. Um, uh, we are back tomorrow with um, baby bathing. So I will be doing the filming with Trish Nisham. So hopefully we can answer your questions then. Um, so I'll say goodbye for just now before my technology goes completely. Um, and we'll catch up with you tomorrow. Okay, bye.